Holocaust denial has become an everyday event, and as time goes by, fewer survivors are alive to tell their stories. Israel's Showcase Holocaust Museum has unveiled the new Moshal Shoah Legacy Campus, along with technological tools to save the remnants of this very dark period of human history. After October 7th, uh, when uh incredible rise in anti-Semitism all over the world uh, has gone rampant. Uh, it was especially important for us uh, to have this conference that was programmed long ago, before October 7th, but now it uh, acquired a special significance. Yad Vashem's International Institute for Holocaust Education is hosting the International Educational Conference. Over 150 educators from 40 countries are sharing the strategies to enhance Holocaust education worldwide. The global approach to Holocaust education is being adopted internationally. Several educators spoke to the media line about challenges they face during teaching processes. The Toronto District School Board is the largest in Canada and my school is one of the largest in the board. We've got almost 1,800 students. The great majority are um, white. We have a lot of South Asian students, and then we have a large Muslim student population. We have a tiny Jewish population. So we are somewhat feeling othered, marginalized. Well, I am concerned that whereas my students, uh, juniors, seniors in the American education uh, system, are very critical when we study topics such as uh, the causes of World War II or Stalin, you, you, you name it really. But when it comes to the Arab-Israeli conflict, as if people check all of their skills to critically think and, have, and throw out very irrational uh, comments, uh, sound bites. And where I teach, it's in Metro Detroit, Michigan. There, there is a large Arab American community. And I feel that sometimes maybe they are too quick to judge uh, the state of Israel. And then it's, it's also beautiful in a way to see that they are open to, to conversation and further research and then write very good essays that perhaps would have been one-sided prior to. But following some encouragement, a nice open-minded conversation that, that, uh, that end up a very, yeah, I would say, sound conclusions that the challenge is their perhaps re preconceived biases. Yad Vashem has also become a platform for scientists and professors studying anti-Semitism and neo-Nazism who are striving to find a remedy for these social diseases. I have been studying the neo-Nazi movement for many, many years. And when it comes to anti-Semitism and the Nazi movement, it is quite easy research. The neo-Nazis, they know that they are anti-Semites uh, and they are just a small fraction of the population. Uh, in the 90s, they really posed a lethal threat to individuals and particularly to Jewish life and community and individuals. Uh, today, anti-Semitism the threat of anti-Semitism come from different discourses. I would say that what we have today is a perfect anti-Semitic storm. When people say today that they are against Zionists, I don't think that they realize uh, that they are talking about Jews, and I don't think that they understand what Zionism uh, is. New tools are vital in combating anti-Semitic biases and are featured prominently in this educational event. It's funny because we're at a conference for Holocaust education, but it's becoming increasingly clear that Holocaust education does nothing to stop anti-Semitism. So we really need more understanding of simply like, what does it mean to be a Jew? What is Jewish culture? Understanding that there is not a single monolith. There's not like a single Jew. Uh, that if you look at what a Jew is across the diaspora, like different race, different ethnicity, same religion, same culture, same language. So I think it's important for people to understand more of what that means than just learning about the Holocaust, because that on its own clearly has not solved the issue. Well, what I do feel is most important is make that personal connection for the students. Uh, on the one hand, it, 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 yes, it is a thing that happened 80 years ago, and at the same time, is it relevant for the student in my classroom? I would say absolutely. I feel that losing the human connection 
is, is going to be a, a, a huge loss and a huge challenge. Um, I think we as the educators who've used survivors, have connections with survivors, I think we'll feel it more than the students. Um, I would like to say that we will just continue on with the virtual learning and the virtual testimony. It's what we're going to have to do. We, I, I don't know what other choice we have. But honestly, I am concerned that it won't quite have the same emotional impact on the students. It's just another thing on a screen uh, that they can tune out too easily. AI is becoming an essential technology in the way Holocaust identification is being preserved. We are using AI in the field of, in the archives here for uh, new ways of research, for new ways of search, for new ways of even getting new names of victims out of all the documents that we already have or testimonies that we already have but had, but we had no ability to, to actually exert uh, names of, of victims out of. Through AI, that's on one hand, we are now creating new uh, inter interactive uh, uh, educational spaces in which we are uh, examining the ways to actually help students to uh, read, for example, photos in a more accurate, uh, interactive way. Danny Dayan served as Israel's Consul General in New York before leaving the position in 2020 to help unite the Jewish people. When I returned from my position in New York, I returned very passionate about the relationship within Israel and the diaspora. And in some senses, also Yad Vashem is the continuation of that. You know, I'm, I'm now describing, I'm not saying that that's the, what should be, but the fact is that in some senses, politics divide the Jewish people and even religion divides the Jewish, the Jewish people, while uh, Holocaust remembrance unites the Jewish people. Yad Vashem's new Moshe Legacy Campus, designed to enhance Holocaust education and research, includes advanced classrooms, a modern research center, and interactive exhibits aimed at preserving and teaching the history of the Holocaust. The Moshal Shoah Legacy Campus uh, uh, will uh, have in its uh, heart the Chapelle uh, Collection Center, as well as a new auditorium and uh, two uh, spaces where we can uh, uh, enlarge and actually double our ability to uh, show exhibitions for the public. So from the one hand to hold all the collections and to share the knowledge with the public. Two main uh, technical uh, achievements here. One is the fact that uh, we gathered everything into one place and we have five uh, uh, laboratories here of, for all types of material. We have uh, a laboratory for textile, for paper, for art, uh, for artifacts. Uh, and by that we are treating uh, everything very well, the most advanced laboratories uh, that uh, we have in this type in Israel. And the second one is that we have the best, uh, the best safe, the best uh, uh, places here in the building, five floors below ground, to keep all those treasures in uh, the most advanced way. It is the best in Israel technologically. From Jerusalem, Veronica Neifach reporting for the Media Line.